we're reviewing Those Who Wish Me Dead, starring Angelina Jolie. Uh, Nick, do you want to give us your initial thoughts? This will be a spoiler review, so if you haven't seen the movie, go watch it, then come back yeah. to the channel. Um, I think it was, I think it was all right. Like it was, um, it went, it went a lot better than I thought it was. Cause like, I remember watching the trailer and not being all that impressed. It just, well, I don't think it was a good trailer. So I was like really, un I was underwhelmed by that. So I went in with low expectations, but I was like, oh, okay. Like this isn't like the best picture of the year, but like, it's also like pretty, it's, it's relatively like, you know, efficient at just, you know, just pretty straightforward crime thriller. Um, Angelina Jolie is great. John Barenthal is doing his John Barenthal thing around a lot longer than he usually is in movies. So I can, I have to give props to that. Um, even um, uh, Aiden, Aiden Gillen, I think his name is Aiden Gillen and Nicholas Holt as the assassins. I thought were, you know, they, everyone did like what was needed of their characters. Um, uh, and I, I, I think it was all right. <laughs> I really, that's like the base thoughts I have. So I know for me, uh, I like Taylor Sheridan because I've seen Wind River really liked it. Hell or High Water, which he also directed, same with Wind River. And he wrote Sicario, which Denis Villeneuve directed. Um, so he's been on some really good projects and had a really good track record so far. I think this is probably his worst outing so far. I don't know if worst is the right word to use because I don't think this is necessarily a bad movie, but it's not a good movie. I don't know. It's just kind of like meh. Uh, and I like Angelina Jolie. I think it's a little on the nose of her character. Uh, those flashbacks that they show, it's like, I, I get it the first time. I got it the second time too. Like you don't need to keep on reinforcing it. We can, it, it almost felt like for someone who doesn't normally spoon feed the audience, you're spoon feeding the audience a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and while I, I do like the pacing of this movie a lot, I think it's good at, it's what, hour 43, something like that. Around there. And it moves well. Uh, and I think Angelina Jolie performance wise is pretty good. I don't think she's anything special, but I think she's pretty good. Yeah. Um, but I think the problem is that you don't buy this relationship with the kid because you don't buy the relationship between him and his dad in the first 10 minutes. Uh, and I think that relationship could have been really well orchestrated. I just think the chemistry wasn't there. And I think the dialogue was just in the completely wrong world for that. Um, like it, it, it felt off the kind of just inauthentic the whole time, mm -hmm. overly dramatic. Yeah. Uh, I had plot questions like how that paper that he had that had everything on it. Mm -hmm. but, I like the villains. I think they're fun. I think it's kind of weird guy in suit gives two guys objective. That's this yeah. like massive. It's like they're going to send two guys when they need to get this massive thing done or there's massive consequences. doesn't make a ton of sense to me. Yeah. Um, I feel like it's it runs into the uh, Wonder Woman 1984 issue of like the first act just takes forever to set up everything and like um you know depending on the movie like you you can afford to take your time in like setting up like the different players but I feel like in this case it being a like thriller action survivalist film like you have to get to the action part like like you just gotta like get to like that's like um the big sell like I, I remember like again to refer to the trailer they made a big thing about the whole like forest fire thing but that doesn't even really come into play like mid second act so like I've like the first act just takes I think a while to like set up like they the by the time like the core relationship is supposed to be Angelina and Julie and the kid but they don't even meet until like again like the second act or so when you compare it to like in say Logan he, Hugh Jackman meets Daphne Keene kind of like like the first 10 minutes or so uh, I think it just takes like it just takes a while to like just get through everything and it's not like the first act is like I think it's like entertaining to see them like just like seeing like Barenthal and Jolie bounce off each other but like it just takes a while for like stuff to start actually happening yeah and I think you're right they could have used less in the first act one of the things I was most bummed about is they set up that low you know the parach parachuting from really low heights 
you know, or going really fast and just parachuting off. And I thought when they were on that tower in during the third act, that how they were going to get off that tower was by doing that like low altitude parachute thing. I was like, that would have been an epic thing. I thought the setup was there for that exact reason. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, that, that's like, a, I, it felt like a missed opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't, I don't know if it's true or not. You know, they probably had a reason why they didn't do that. Mm -hmm. But I felt like that was, that whole thing was a setup that was like, oh, that's a cool moment. And then it's just like, it's there's no happen. payoff. Yeah. And those relationships know. don't have a payoff either. Right. It, it just, it just feels like. It's like like I like Barenthal randomly drops at one point. And he's like, "Oh, Angelina Jolie was my ex girlfriend." That was really like, it could have just been like, "Oh, they're coworkers." Like I don't know why he had, to, I don't know why that was there. It's like doesn't go anywhere, doesn't build right. up to anything. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's like, and it's so interesting because like Sheridan, like from Hello High Water, uh, Sicario. I know you've seen. I haven't seen Wind River just yet, but like, he's a like he's a pretty good like, he's pretty good at getting just like cutting through like the the fat i guess and just going straight to something which is why like i don't know i like i'm not sure like what was different with with here and i feel bad saying that because i like i love hell or, hell or high water and sicario um it just feels like it was i think it was just like a sense of pacing that was like throwing everything off for a good yeah which of. is it's weird to say that about hour and 43 minute movie but it really could have been an hour 30 or maybe even hour 25 right. you know if it's just a little bit it's cut a little bit tighter i think it could have done that yeah i i do want to say that action fight sequence between john bernthal's wife and the two yeah men, that was yeah. pretty awesome uh i love that moment where he she's holding the i can't remember what she's holding to the fire yeah, it's exactly. like the lights all can yeah the it's lights like, all can it's like it's pointed the wrong way and he's like she's like no it's not and then just lights him on fire. I was like, that's pretty yeah. epic. I love like, like, like when like pregnant, pregnant women kicking ass. Not, there's not a lot of characters like that, but like, you know, Fargo, now this, I'm like, <laughs> good stuff, good stuff. Yeah, that was a solid action sequence. Um, she was a solid supporting character too. Who I, I like, yeah. Um, she came in, she came in where she needed to, but um, yes, I did love that sequence. Um, I thought the whole like uh I thought the whole like standoff with um Barenthal and the two with Gillen and Holt, I thought was pretty entertaining too. Like the whole verbal standoff, he was like daring them to shoot him. I thought that was entertaining. Yeah. I I, I did too, but he was too they they portray him as being smart and like he's gonna get shot anyways this whole time. Yeah. And then he still goes along with them. Mm -hmm. oh yeah it like, undercuts the... yeah like it undercuts that whole entire scene i'm like that's a really good scene that's what someone who's smart should do and i'm like this is the perfect time that he just gets shot right like it makes right narrative sense and then they're like no we want to keep him along right and it's like come on he's smart he knows they don't have his wife they would have shown it to him to create motivation they, like he he know he should know as a character and he's too smart not to know right yeah i think like now that we're like we you know just talking through some of this like i think a good part of what makes this film different from hello high water or sicario is like and maybe you can speak on wind river's behalf but like it feels like he most of those films prior films are like very like intimate small scale well here it feels like he tried like there's a you know government conspiracy and like you know there's a like lawyer gets killed you know his house gets bombed and then it sends the father away and then Angela and Julie's dealing with PTSD and a totally unrelated issue it just feels like there was a lot more happening than yeah like, usually so there's just the focus of like characters were off like I would have preferred if like Angela Lena Jolie was the reason was he was who the dad was going towards instead of John right. Randall, just because it's I was like it's a I know a guy who knows a guy and like by that point like there's too many characters to like connect there's like too much like relation like relationships you have to build up um i think like just the the scope of it was just i don't know a lot larger than it needed to be and um yeah like why didn't why wasn't the dad just made the lawyer you know like 
they like yeah. bought this house like that would have kept it like you could have built a whole other movie around just the the the, the conspiracy and jolie's ptsd like mm-hmm. those two plot lines alone could have made a whole like other film but they you brought it together and it's like a lot happening yeah and i think it's weird because you're like well couldn't he have just sent this to the news mm-hmm. right like there there are a ton of different ways you could have sent what you found out to the news like every newspaper we got this really cool thing called email <laughs> yeah um, and you can do phone interviews right uh and why isn't he driving to a news station like all that sort of stuff like there are so many confusing just kind of plot holes that were that made the suspension of disbelief really difficult for this film i'll say yeah and again it's just all in that i think first act of like setting up excuse me of like information who knows who why is you know xyz happening just a lot of a lot of just stuff happening that doesn't coalesce into like the mid the mid part of the film yeah and i do want to say this because I've seen a lot of directors and casting directors specifically doing this. Stop casting typical villain characters as villains. Mm-hmm. Like, like, just stop it. Because <laughs> in that opening scene, when they ring the doorbell, I'm not like, oh, this is just the beginning of the movie. I'm like, oh, well, these guys are obviously the villains. Yeah. It's right? just like, yeah. Because you know who the guys are. They're, they play villains. Right. You have to start playing, like, it would have been something if they like, like I'm trying to think what they could have done. Maybe if they casted like Seth Rogen or something really Seth, like yeah. unpredictable and been like, whoa, wait a second. But yeah, I get what you're saying. Like, um, always like an intense character though. Holden Gillen play it from what I've seen. So yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it I don't know. it's funny. it's like those small moments. I did like that they cast John Bernthal against like villain type. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I and I like him all the way up to that point where he starts tracking for them. And I'm like, come on, we just had this whole conversation that said the exact opposite of what he's doing now. Right. Like, like it, it's stuff like that that I think really brings this movie down a peg. Because I don't mm. think the chemistry between Angelina Jolie and the other kids bad necessarily. Right. But I feel like it could be stronger. And yeah. and I think that I don't know if that comes from just the two of them in their journey together. Because I think it, I think that's cool. Like the way they're running through the field with the lightning hitting the field, mm-hmm. you know, and they're going back and forth and back and forth. I thought that stuff was cool. Um, and the final fight sequence, I think, for what it was on a small scale, was pretty cool. Yeah, I enjoyed that like as well, the, like cat and mouse as like feel of it. Yeah. Um, I think like just more time dedicated to them instead of like split amidst like. The various other people would have done would have benefited just building up this building up this dynamic maybe like allowing us to viewers to like get a better like feel for them um i think that might have just just been it yeah i agree i think i don't know i really think there's a potential for this to be a really really, really good movie <laughs> and it's just not quite there this could have been like six six eight ep- maybe more like six episode like mini series i think that could have worked maybe just a little bit be- better to like build out people i don't know i just feel like they either needed less time or they needed more time and i just don't or like mm-hmm. div- redivided focus I'm, I'm not something somewhere in those solutions it lies the key to like yeah. reorganizing this yeah i i i don't know I don't know exactly how to solve this movie. I know it was it was half decent. I didn't, I wouldn't say like, oh, this this movie kind of like sucked. I wouldn't recommend it. I'd be like, go watch it. Not don't expect like a ton out of it. Yeah. But I think you'll have fun. Like I had I had fun with all the action sequences and kind of the the ride it takes you on. I'd say for sure. Right. Yeah, everyone. I think like it does like as an entertaining like piece i think like you know it does its i would say i was entertained um had its issues and but like i think action wise and like acting wise i think everyone everyone did their job i think also as directing i think sheridan sheridan did all right so um 
for me uh just to jump to like my like ranking list i'd say this is like mid to low tier um i'd have to i don't think i've actually put it on anything yet so i'd have to see where that lands but i'd anticipate it being mid to low tier depending on what's there yeah i i i'm with you on that it's I think next week I'll be able to have like my full list of 10 films for the year because it's been a really slow start with COVID um, and everyone wants to make, put their movies back in theaters. So we'll see where it ends up, but I, I, right now I'm with you. It's a mid to low tier movie. Um, So I'm, I'm excited to see what everyone else thinks. Let us know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the video. We'll see you next time.